Hey guys, Bar from TST Industries here. I have a Honda CB650R here with me in the shop. Very similar model to this CBR650R has the same kind of an issue we're going to be talking about. When you replace your OEM signals from the factory to some kind of aftermarket signals like you see here, our BL6s or our MEC GTRs, you will have a very wonky flash rate or no flash rate at all if you've already gone and changed the tail signals as well. Now the OEM signals are LED type signals, so you would think that these bikes will flash just right with aftermarket LED signals, but that is not the case. This system is designed with a certain threshold of current draw in mind, and if it falls below that like it does with aftermarket signals, it tries to alert you that something is not up to spec. Now, Typically you want your signals to be flashing and the OEM signal relay is prohibitive of that. So we've come out with our Gen 2 flasher relay to combat that hyper flash or no flash situation. Our relay is basically a plug and play component that replaces your OEM relay. It actually hooks on to the rubber keeper that keeps this onto the bike in the same fashion as the OEM relay. And the only difference really is visual. And one small, really cool nuance about our relay is that you can snap this cap off, remove the circuit, plug it in, and access this flash rate adjuster and modify the flash rate to your liking. Now, we send these preset to 85 cycles per minute, which is the typical OEM rate for most bikes. If you don't like that, if you want to modify it further, that's up to you. On this particular bike and a CBR650R as well, the relay is under the tank. Honda did not do us any favors with that. A bunch of stuff has to come off. But I'm going to break down the steps for you and make it as easy as possible with very simple tools. I'll make it all simple steps explained in detail. So hope you enjoy. Let's get started. All right, let's begin this process by removing the passenger seat. Then we'll grab a five millimeter Allen key and remove these two fasteners here in the aft section of the front seat. And this will permit us to remove this seat off the bike. Now we will use the same five millimeter Allen here on this fastener. And now this panel can come off. There are a number of Velcro type fasteners here and also a rubber grommet with a peg type fastener that comes off. You just need to pry it away perpendicular to the center plane of the bike. Now this whole panel slides forward to unlock it and it comes off. I'm just gonna leave it down here for now. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, same process. Now up top, there are two additional five millimeter fasteners up here. We will crack those loose and remove them. All right, now this panel just pops up in the front. And it's pretty simple. Just have some interference clips that go under the tank around these rubber pieces here and then also these mushroom type Velcro fasteners. That comes off, gives us access to the black shroud here around the ignition. This has two push type fasteners. You reset them by pressing in the center. When you press the center in, they become unlocked. You pull them out, it's pretty simple. Now this gets pulled up along the same axis as the ignition barrel and it comes off. Just quickly show you where these guys work because you were not able to see that. So when they're on the bike, they're over here forward of these rubber grommets. Now we have access to this 10 millimeter fastener 
Same one on the opposite side of the bike. And there's a 10 millimeter fastener here going through the tank. It'll be necessary to lift the tank. I will undo these fasteners and also this, and we'll get into the hoses in just a little bit. Next step, we will be pulling up on the tank very gently. Don't get too aggressive on this. This is your fuel hose here, and it's connected to your fuel pump and also to the fuel rail for your fuel injectors. It is really, really important not to strain any of the connectors for this hose. If you pull up on it too, too hard or too far, you may strain that, so be very careful. I'm going to unlock it here by just prying it, prying this green locking feature away from the connector. I have a rag handy here. Make sure that we don't spill gas all over the place. We should be good here. This bike wasn't powered up for a while, so it shouldn't be pressurized. But if you just shut down your bike not too long ago, it's still going to be pressurized. Now we just pull straight out along the axis of the fuel pump connector here just like that and now we'll need to slip this hose off and this one I like to use needle nose pliers or just pliers of any sort on these clamps and then if it's been sitting for a while you're gonna have to crack the hose away from the surface of that little nipple and then that comes off and the tank is free to come off I like to store my tanks on uh, used tires or something like that and that prevents any of this from coming in contact with anything that may damage it. Tank is actually not free to come off. We still have to unplug the fuel sender. It's pretty simple. Unplug, good to go. Now we'll need to get under this black cover here. I'm gonna make some room. I like to put a clean bag around our fuel hose. Don't wanna be pushing debris towards our tiny little jets and the injectors. We'll get all these hoses out of the way. I'm gonna unsnap this hose from the routing geometry. And now we've exposed these two push fasteners. They need to come out. Same as the front panel push fasteners. Press them down, that unlocks them. And I drop one. It's all right, I see it. Now this panel can be pivoted up a little bit. There is one more fastener, one more feature that holds this onto the receiving box that I cannot show you until I take it out. All right, this window has a clip that it interferes with. The clip is in this direction. So we need to push it up, forward, and then come back out with it. That comes out. I'm gonna fish out the push fastener that I dropped. Good to go there. And now we identify the relays. This is our relay box here. This is our flasher relay tight in there for my large fingers. I'm just gonna use my pliers to take it out. And now the consequence of taking this out is that this relay also comes out. The wires are pretty tightly wound down there. No big deal, we'll replace it later. All right, this is our Mitsuba guy. We're gonna have to slip off this cover, take down this rubber keeper That will expose our plug. Pretty simple. Press on the center. That unlocks it. This comes out. As you can see, we have the same connector on our relay. A lot of people ask why we only have two pins in our relay when some of the OEM relays are three pin. Some of these are grounded. We've devised a circuit that interrupts 
the signaling circuit without the need for a ground or any external power. So still safe to use, no problem, as you'll see in just a moment. Simple plug and play, and we can test it. It's looking to be flashing at 85 cycles per minute. Everything's operating properly. If you want to adjust it beyond this speed, like I said in the intro, you take it out, you plug it in, kind of just have to be mindful how you plug that in. You could just use the keying of this connector and could actually leave it in the connector. That's probably the simplest thing to do. Plug this back in, make sure the actual pins interface with the pins on the female connector. Very important part here is to make sure that you keep this isolated from any other components and not touch ground. You can ground it out, short it, and that'll blow a fuse. All right, so now we'll engage a signal and using a small Phillips, we'll go clockwise, counterclockwise till we get the speed we like. All the way clockwise is very, very slow. Counterclockwise is crazy fast, kind of like a rave light. Somewhere in between will be your sweet spot or perhaps back to somewhere close to 85 cycles per minute, like I like. Power it down, close it back up, and you are good to go. Now, I usually like to do this off the bike. It's much less cumbersome. There is a channel cut into this housing that accepts our circuit board. There is only one way to insert it. And then we get our connector back on here. Press it in until it clicks. This hanging feature, mounting fastener feature, goes into the first slot on this rubber keeper. All right, once you have that all the way up, you can get the rubber boot stretched over this housing. That keeps water and nasty, nasty stuff out of there. Nice. All right, back onto this tab that you can see here. That's where the other slot in the rubber keeper goes. Get our other relay back in place. At this point, we're just jamming in the reverse order of this assembly. First, get this window engaged onto that little clip. All right. And these fasteners. And the rest is really just the exact reverse process. All right, guys, there you have it. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you've installed any aftermarket signaling on your bike, whether it be our BL6 signals, our Echoes, our Meg GTRs, third-party aftermarket signals, or any combination of OEM and aftermarket, our relay has got you covered for proper flash rate of your signaling system. If you like what you see here, if you'd like to pick it up, it's tstindustries.com. We have the relays, we have the signals, we have a bunch of parts and a growing catalog of parts for this bike and other bikes you may have. 
So I hope you come check us out. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Ride safe. Peace.